it's just Martine and welcome to the mid-year book freak out tag. It's the end of July, half of the year has passed us already, and I have some books to talk about with you. So without further ado, let's just jump straight into the video. We're going to start with the best book that I've read so far in 2024, which when you look at the order of these questions, it kind of feels like you're not saving the best for last. You're saving the best for first. So I'll go ahead and tell you that my favorite book so far this year has been Ryan and Avery by David Levithan. If you watched my mid-year freakout tag last year, you would know that my favorite book so far in 2023 at that point was Answers in the Pages by David Levithan, meaning that for two years in a row, David Levithan has stolen the mid-year book freak out tag on this channel. Ryan and Avery is this contemporary YA coming of age romance. It's about these two young men, Ryan and Avery, and we kind of see their relationship in multiple timelines. We start on the day of their fifth date. We kind of move forward in their history from there as a jumping off point. At the same time, we see how that fifth date came to be. So we move backwards in time and count down their dates until we see their first date. The writing is beautiful. Nobody's talking about it. And it just, <laughs> from the very first chapter, I was like, this is gonna be a five-star read for me. I can tell it. And it was, it didn't disappoint. They have my whole heart. That being said, if I had to pick a nonfiction so far this year that every single human ever should read. It has been Daring Greatly by Brene Brown. It's so good. It's all about vulnerability and being your authentic self. And I cannot put into words for you how much it has done for my life this year. So if you have not read this book, please do. Next, we're going to be talking about the best sequel I've read so far this year. There are a lot to choose from because we started this year with an insane tournament battle round of Squash That series. And in fact, my best sequel so far this year was read during that tournament round when I read Heartstopper Volume 5. This was my first five-star book of the year, and I'm trying to think if a single other sequel got five stars. I don't think they did. Now let's talk about a new release that I haven't read yet, but that I want to. I'm actually going to read it really soon. It's not downloaded on my Kindle yet, but it is in my Libby app waiting to be downloaded, and that is A Tempest of Tea. If you know anything about my channel, you know that I'm not huge into fantasy books, but I am huge into heist books. It's heist time. I know this book has been pitched as a heist book, so I want to read it, and I accepted my hold for my library just a couple days ago, and after I finish some book club reads that I'm in the middle of right now, I'll get to start that one. I'm super excited. I'm trying to think of an explanation for why heist books are so incredible to me, and I can't. They're just so fun. They usually feature a pretty large cast of characters. They always have some great twists where you think that the heist won't work, but then they had planned something in advance. I love seeing how their minds work. On the subject of newer releases, let's talk about a book that I'm most excited to read that's coming out later in the year. I technically have two of these. The first is Somewhere Beyond the Sea by TJ Klune, which is the sequel to The House in the Cerulean Sea. I read The House in the Cerulean Sea at just the right time. I had never heard anybody talk about it yet. I listened to the audiobook. That's how you know it's so incredible because if I give a book I read as an audiobook five stars, it's top tier. Audiobooks in my brain usually don't agree. I have some trouble paying attention to them. So when there's one that I pay attention to and remember, like I remember things about it now, I read it years ago. That's a good one. So the sequel, I'm ready. I've also loved every other TJ Klune book I've read up to this point. So obviously I'm going to be thrilled about another. And on the topic of authors that never disappoint, Alexis Hall is coming out with the third book in the Something Fabulous series. This one is called Something Extraordinary. The series is like a historical romance, very queer series. It's Alexis Hall and I love all Alexis Hall books. And I really enjoyed the second book in that series. I did a neck alley vlog where I read it. And so I'm really looking forward to see what he does in this third one. Now let's talk the opposite of excited, which is disappointment. What has been my biggest disappointment so far this year? I'm so glad you asked. It had to be reading the Beautiful Creatures series. We read it for Throwback Book Club, which is co-hosted by Lizzie over at Lizzie's Literary Life and Danielle from Danielle Reads. And the experience of reading that series as a group was fun. The only reason anybody enjoyed these books was because they were very nostalgic for them. They had read them growing up. I did not, and I did not like them. The first one got three stars, but then the rest of them got like two, two and a half stars. That series, how do you even describe it? It's basically this one where this guy has been having this dream about this girl. It's a very like 2010 Wattpad idea vibe where like one character has been dreaming about this random person they don't know and suddenly that person appears in real life and things kind of go from there. It's also set in the deep south which was a 
very weird thing in this series. Anyway, the point is that I did not have a smashing time reading it and it was really disappointing because I was really looking forward to it. But let's forget all about that and move on. If we're going to be disappointed, we have to be surprised by something. So what was my biggest surprise so far this year? Technically, my biggest surprise is a book that I cannot tell you about yet. You'll find out about it in December. I think that video is coming out in December, not January, because it's one of my 12 TBRs books for the year. If you don't know, every year I make 12 secret TBRs of Christmas, and my biggest surprise book was a five-star read that came from one of those videos, so I can't tell you about it now. Instead, I'll give you this conciliatory answer and say that some of my biggest surprises were books that I did anticipate liking, but kept putting off for one reason or another, and so I made this vlog where I read books that I'd been clicking deliver later on for months, and all of those were smash hits for me. I think when you plan on reading a book for so long, you can hype it up too much in your head. And so the fact that I loved all of those books was a surprise. That's even the video where my review of Ryan and Avery is. Next, let's talk about the great wordsmiths that craft these worlds for us to enjoy. Let's talk about my new favorite author. A lot of the books that I've loved so far this year have been by authors I already adored, but there was one five-star read in the month of June that came out of nowhere for me. It was actually recommended by one of my friends. They were like, if you like cute YA contemporaries, you need to read Six More Months of June by Daisy Garrison. I did indeed love that book. It's Daisy Garrison's debut, and so Daisy Garrison had to be my favorite new author this year. The next question is a bit of a tricky one for me because it's newest fictional crush. I think I have an answer for this this year, but like I'm not positive, I'm not fully there. It's really hard for me to tell if I have a crush on a fictional character, but one fictional character that does have my whole heart and reminded me of a person that I love very much was Miles from Funny Story by Emily Henry. And as I was reading this book and I was describing this man to my sister, she said, that sounds like Harris. And Harris is my boyfriend of five and a half years. So if I'm going to say that I had a newest fictional crush, I'm happy to say that it's on a character that resembles the person who's already special in my life. Now, Miles might be a great character, but that's fictional crush territory. Let's talk about my newest favorite character in general. Technically, I met this character for the first time at the end of last year, like November, I think, but that character's arc has grown so much in the rest of the series. We spent a lot more page time with this person, and this person went from a character I enjoyed to a character I loved, and that's The Fool from the Farseer trilogy by Robin Hobb. The Fool is just this enigma. And there's one time when the Fool appears in one of the Farseer books. I won't tell you which, I won't tell you when, but my jaw dropped. I was in a hotel room at a conference with some other people and they were like, what's up? And I said, my book just got crazy. A character I love just suddenly appeared again. <laughs> so for that and that alone, I have to give the Fool props as my favorite fictional character so far this year. It's not jaw dropping, but it is tear jerking. What's a book that made me cry? I actually can't remember crying at a book this year so far. And I know that's maybe sad to say to some of you who cry at lots of books, but books don't often make me cry. And weirdly enough, sometimes when a book makes me cry, it's like a mid book. It just had one thing that was a little too personal and hit. So it's very rare among my five star reads and even four and a half star reads to find a book that has ever made me cry. That said, a book that I maybe cried about in discussions about it was This Here Flesh by Cole Arthur Riley, which is this series of spiritual musings by literally the most brilliant mind ever. I had the pleasure of seeing her speak at a conference. And when she answers questions from the audience unscripted, she still sounds as brilliant as all her writing is. Like that's just the way her mind works. I had some very intense conversations about the contents of this book with some really close friends. And I think those conversations made me cry, but I'm not sure I cried while reading the book. I hope that's an okay answer. On the flip side of that, there were some books that have made me happy so far this year. There are two that come to mind that made me like stupid giggly happy. Those two are Check and Mate by Allie Hazelwood and Funny Story by Emily Henry. Check and Mate is Allie Hazelwood's first YA romance about some chess champions. And I don't care about chess at all, but I, this book made me care about it a whole lot when I was reading it. And just in general, it made me kick my feet and giggle. And the same with Funny Story, although there was no chess involved in that. That was very much like, not enemies to friends to lovers, but like a meh to friends to lovers situation, fake dating trope, which I always love, so. It made me happy. Next, let's talk about beautiful books. What's the most beautiful book I bought so far this year? I'm gonna go with The Revisioners by Margaret 
Wilkerson Sexton. Just because it's so bright and colorful and lovely, there was something about it that caught my eye. And I'm not sure if beauty is what you would call it, but it made me pick it up at the used bookstore. This is a cover I am drawn to. In that way, I do think it's a beautiful cover. Alternatively, I could go with Spring, which is a book I got at the Dollar Tree and has this beautiful like painting on the front and lots of paintings throughout. Like there's just something so special about this, but I have a really hard time picking out beautiful books because I get my books through bargains and free things. And so it's not like I get a special edition that's landing in my hand to be like, look at all these beautiful things on it, you know? The books that I just showed you are books I've acquired this year but haven't read. And that brings me to the last question, which are, what are some books that I have to read before the end of the year? I cannot tell you what they are, but this is a box full of books that I need to read before the end of the year. Like I mentioned earlier in the video, I make 12 secret TPRs every year and I am behind. If you take the number of books that I have to read for 12 TBRs and you divide it in half and say you should have read half of them before your mid-year freakout tag, I would say I have not done that. I think I have 59? <laughs> 59? Oh dear. I have about 59 books left to read for that. We'll see if I can pull it off. I think I can. I've been reading 30 minutes a day for a little while and we'll just keep going like that until it's over you know? So as much as I've read books this year, I have so many more books to read and I'm going to love every second of it. With that said, I'm going to end this freak out tag here. If you'd like to go ahead and give it a big thumbs up and comment down below what has been your favorite book that you've read so far this year. And also, have you read any of the books I talked about? How do you feel about those books? And subscribe for more bookish and college lifestyle content. And until next time, bye humans, bye!